Okay guys, and in this video what I want to do is look at um, the previous IB questions concerning indirect taxes which would come up on paper 3 of what soon will be the old syllabus. Now, like a number of these kind of um, pamphlets, or, or, or not at all pamphlets, but, um, uh, question sets that I've put together, there's a lot of information that's not directly pertaining to us. So what I shall do is just move on very, very quickly, okay? Now, what we've got here, and I'm, forgive me as I'm moving the um, document camera, what we've got here is this idea, okay, of the demand which is here and the supply here, perfectly inelastic supply of um, a fake commodity called widgets. And you tend to actually find that in a lot of examples in um, um, economics. Um, now, so the country of uh, the government of country Y decides to impose an indirect tax of ten dollars per widget. Okay. Now, with reference to Figure Two, explain how the incidence of tax, who bears the tax, who actually pays it. I understand that the tax is always applied to the producer, but what the producer will do, depending on the relative elasticities, is pass on some of that tax to the consumer in the form of higher prices. Okay, so with reference to figure two, which is, and again, I shall move, which is this one here, okay? So I, I, I stress for this question, a perfectly inelastic supply curve and a downward sloping demand curve. With reference to figure two, um, explain how the incidence of taxation on consumers and or producers will be influenced by the price elasticity of supply. Well, there is a $10 tax per widget. It's a specific tax per good. And if, again, you forgive me, and I'll bring this down here a bit, that would mean that the supply curve shifts upwards by $10 for every single good that's produced. But because we can see that this supply curve is perfectly inelastic, a vertical straight line, that means that essentially the suppliers, the producers of the good will be the ones paying all the tax, okay? Now, supply is perfectly inelastic. Therefore, producers will bear the full burden or incidence of the tax. Equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity will not change. So the consumers are not affected and again, producers bear the full burden of the tax. It is only because one of them is perfectly inelastic that that means that they will bear the full burden of the tax. Now, what I have here is a bit of a cheat sheet that I'm going to be coming back to in a second. So if you forgive me while I adjust the pages. Now, and I shall move my document camera up slightly. Okay, so what we have here is the following diagram illustrates the annual demand and supply for sugar in country C. It's a completely different situation, completely different scenario. We're not talking about widgets anymore. Now, in order to reduce the consumption of sugar, the government of country C, and I'm reading down here just so we're all clear, has decided to impose an indirect tax. As a result, the new market uh, supply curve for sugar is given by this, where QS is the quantity of sugar supplied in thousands of tons per year. Please keep that in mind for later questions. And P is the price of sugars in dollars per price of sugars, price of sugar in dollars per ton. On the diagram, plot and label the new supply curve. Well, what we really must do here is take this QS equals 450 plus 5P, and we must be uh, in a position to draw it. So, well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write QS equals minus, excuse me if I didn't say the minus um, previously, minus 450 plus 5P. Now, an easy way to do this is, always, so we need two points on the line, okay? We need to find two points that exist on this line. So an easy way to do this is let's set QS equal to zero. So instead of QS here on the left-hand side, I'm going to write zero, equals minus 450, plus 5p. I'm going to bring this minus 450 over the equal sign, thus changing its sign, and I'm going to leave the 5p over. Now, what that means is, if I divide both sides by the number before the letter I'm trying to find, 5p divided by 5 is simply equal to p, and 450 divided by 5 is simply 90. So what we have here is that at price equal to $90, quantity supplied equals zero. So that's one point on that line. And that's, again, of course, like, you know, really, really important to know that you um, are uh, aware and capable of, how, of, of, of drawing these demand and supply curves, as we see in this case. Now, 
Um, if I may just refer back to this diagram here, okay, so let's look at somewhere around here, right? So we've got uh, a price that goes, a price axis that goes from zero uh, uh, down at the bottom up to 220 down at the very top. Okay, so let's choose something close to the middle. So what I'm going to choose is something in and around, let's say, 150. So what do I mean by that? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the equation of this line again, the equation of this supply curve. And I'm going to say, now, I'm going to say price equals 150. So I'm going to solve for quantity supplied. So I've got quantity supplied, which is what I'm looking for, equals minus 450 plus 5 times 150. Because it's 5p, and now I've just chosen to say, well, what is the quantity supplied when price equals 150? So instead of p, I've put in 150 here. So what we've got is qs equals minus 450 plus and I believe that's 750. QS, and again, I don't know why I do this, but I just have a tendency to do this when I'm working out. Of course, you can absolutely skip this, uh, this step here. I just like to put the positive numbers first and the negative numbers second, and I get QS equals um, 300. Now, what we are actually saying here is that um, at price equals 150, the quantity supplied equals 300. And it's not 300 units, what it actually is 300,000 tons or units. Okay, so let's go and try and like transcribe this or put this on the diagram. So we have two points. One is P equals 90 and QS, quantity supplied, equals zero. So I'm gonna actually practice what I preach for uh, very few times here, and I'm gonna put that one there, okay? Now actually, another thing that I might do just before I start, okay, is I'm going to say, look, this was, now it's not important for this question at all, but I'm just gonna say, this was the original quantity here, and can you see that, I don't know, I think I'll put that in pen. This was the original quantity here, okay? Equilibrium quantity, okay? And this was the original equilibrium price. Okay, so I'm going to call this, let's say, PEQ, this is 90, and this is PEQ1, okay, equals $90, right? So, this is the first point here, and I am going to go back to my pencil, all right? So, that's one point that's on the new supply curve, which is dictated and has been influenced by the new specific indirect tax, which we have to calculate later and we don't know what it is yet. And P equals 150 and QS equals 300. So what I'm gonna actually do here is I'm gonna go up from 300, up, 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 even though my eyes are bad, I still, yes, here's another point here. Now because the tax is specific, because it's a fixed amount per good, it is not an ad valorem tax or a percentage of the selling price. What you actually find is that this entire line shifts up and is parallel by the amount of the tax, okay, which is, this is S plus tax here. So, and again, you know, you're never going to be absolutely perfect. And as you can see, I've, 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 done a bit of a dog on it here. But what I'm saying to you now is that this distance here, okay, that amount is the um, um, tax per unit, okay? That's the distance that it shifted upwards. Now, I will, I suppose, I might as well while I'm here, I will um, come down to the um, new equilibrium and that to me is 150 yeah that's the equilibrium quantity with the tax after the tax and this here and I'm going to call this PEQ tax okay this was QEQ1 and this is QEQ tax there Okay, so just again, it's getting a little bit close, um, cluttered, but I hope it, 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 it makes sense. So there has been a tax per unit that has caused the um, supply curve to shift upwards. Okay, now, it says in question 2B down the bottom, it says state the size of the um, tax per unit. Now again, I just hope, I just want you to see how I have done these calculations here. I have just found, forgive me while I um, um, put this so you can see it, I have just found two points that are on the supply curve. And I really, really, really hope that you understand where these are coming from. 
Now, so the, the question here then says, state the size of the tax per ton of sugar. Right, so what we need to do now, and I'll actually adjust the document camera upwards, is we need to say, okay, well look here, right? So let's go across from here, and let's go across from here. So we go across here, and we have 110 was this amount, okay? And then we go across here, and we have 150 was this amount. All right, so if I actually just take one from the other, because it doesn't matter what quantity I choose these values from, fifty dollars minus a hundred and ten um, equals forty dollars. What I'm actually saying here is that it doesn't matter what quantity I choose to, to to measure the differences from. So if I went from let's say here, okay, so I went across from here and it's a hundred, and then from there and up it's a hundred and forty. It's the same calculation. Okay, it really doesn't matter. So what we actually get here is the 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 um, forty dollars is the tax per ton of sugar. And again, I really hope that makes sense to you guys. I really hope that you understand what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. All I'm saying is that at every price, forty dollars of an indirect specific tax has been added onto the um, price of the, or onto the supply curve, and as such, onto the cost of production, shifting up the supply curve. Okay, so it says, calculate the producer surplus, which will be earned following the imposition of the tax. Okay, well, let's go back to this here. So what the producer surplus is, the area above the supply curve and below the price. All right, so here now the new supply curve is thus starting at 90 and with a positive slope of 5. So for every time you go up 1 in terms of price, you go across 5 in terms of quantity. So what we are trying to do is to measure this area here. Well, that looks like a triangle to me, and I hope that you know from all the way back in primary school how to calculate the area of a triangle. So the way that you calculate the area of a triangle is half the base times the height, and it's half times the price change multiplied by the quantity. Okay, that's why I wrote price there. Okay, so what I mean by price change, or I suppose price divergence, it's half times this, which is the base here, so that's 120 minus 90, times the quantity, which is 150,000, okay, 150,000. So what I've got to do now is I have to write down one half times 120 minus 90, and again, where am I getting these figures from? Okay, this is the price difference, so it's this minus this, that's the length of the base, okay, multiplied by um, 150, one, two, three thousand. And where am I getting that from? Because this here is the height of it, which is 150,000. Now, so I'm going to write down one half times 30 times 150,000, which is 15 times 150, one, two, three, and I have worked that out to be in dollars. Don't forget producer surplus, consumer surplus, and total surplus are always measured in dollars. So $2,250,000. So as I just write down here, answer producer surplus uh, equals, and just writing the exact same number again, okay? Two, two and a quarter million dollars. Okay, now, on to the next thing. Now, I suppose in an effort to be um, clear, I think I've just muddied the waters and probably added more confusion than anything else. But let's just look, and hopefully my logic will become apparent to you later, okay? Determine the incidence. Who pays the taxes, the incidence? So I know, and we've already stated in this video, that the taxes apply to specific and indirect tax, which is regressive. We'll come to that later. An indirect tax is an extra tax per selling of the good. That's applied to the supply curve. But as we have already said, the producers can, depending on relative elasticities, PED versus PES, can pass some of that tax onto the consumer in the form of higher prices. Okay, so let's have a look at this now, right? The original price was 90. 
We have just worked out, not just, I suppose, but here, we have worked out that the tax was $40, uh, dollars, okay? The original price was 90 Following the tax, the consumer now pays 120 So, if you could just ask yourself, how much has the consumer paid? It's 120 minus 90 which equals $30. Okay, the tax per ton, as we have already worked out, is $40. So the producer tax, or the incidence of tax for the producer, equals the total tax minus the incidence of tax on the consumer. So the producer tax equals $40 tax minus $30 that's been paid by the consumer equals $10. So the producer tax incidence is simply $10 per ton of sugar okay and i really hope again that makes sense guys i hope you could follow my logic and um, and so on and so forth now okay 2d excellent okay so here's one i've prepared earlier now the final thing that we have to do in um this um, um handout on the indirect taxation is answer this question there are a lot of claims, and this isn't the question, I know I went into my narrator's voice there, but the question will follow. There are a lot of claims that it is required a tax, a contribution from everybody, particularly the rich, in order to make society more equitable and fair. While there may certainly be an argument for that, me being the individual that I am, without trying to impose my views on you, I would also like you to be fully aware not just for this exam, but also for when you leave this exam and take your place as a citizen, as a person of the world, is that, in general, regressive taxes are very unfair. They are very inequitable. And for this reason that I'm going to explain. Explain using an appropriate example. Remember that, an appropriate example. Why it might be argued that an indirect tax is not equitable Equitable means fair. It's one of the four tax uh, canons of taxation given to us by Adam Smith. An indirect tax is regressive. Well, it's very important that you know what you're talking about before you speak about it, so what does regressive mean? A regressive tax takes a higher proportion of income from lower income households than higher income households and then may be considered inequitable and unfair. Now, let's have a look at this and see if we can understand it better. There are two consumers, Peter and Paul. Peter earns $1,000 a week and Paul earns $500 a week. Okay, just multiply each of them by 52. You get 52,000 for Peter and 26,000 for Paul. They both buy a TV each with a specific indirect tax of $100 applied. Now, we're going to go back to their weekly wages just to look at this. So Peter earns $1,000 a week. That 100 euro tax represents 10% of Peter's weekly income. Whereas that 100 euro tax represents 20% of Paul's weekly income. That 100 euro tax has been added onto that TV by the government. But it's taking a higher proportion away of, of income away from Paul than it is of Peter because Paul earns less than Peter. That's not fair. If taxes are to be equitable, they should be even across the board, not just in terms of a flat tax, which I grant you is more efficient, I grant you that, but in terms of equity, I think is far less equitable, okay? So the same indirect tax is taking a higher proportion of the lower income household's income, and the lower income household's is Paul's income. Okay, guys, that's the end of this video on indirect taxation. I really, really hope that helped. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I really hope to see you in the next video.